Hi, I built a simple sound card for Arduino so my Arduino can finally sing. So it can do this. I don't know if you can hear that from the camera because it's not too loud. I, I connected only the earbuds. And I'm sure some of the gamer friends recognize what this song is. So the concept is this. You got an Arduino that controls digital potentiometer, which any 555 is connected in a fashion so it will create a sine wave. I mean, not sine wave, a square wave. And the resistance from the digital potentiometer decides um, the period and frequency of the sine wave, square wave. Why am I confusing sine wave and square wave? They're totally different. I've, I've attached schematics on hexter.io. I've tried to make it as intuitive as possible, but I've just started to use the, this thing called fritzing. So it's, I don't think it's very intuitive sch schematics, but if you want to give it a go, um, this might help. Or maybe not. But the fun part is the software. To start with, let me explain you what's going on with the Arduino. Um, first hashtag include spi.h, that is um, basically same as import, but just in fashion of C. Uh, constant in CS equal 8. Um, this is going to decide which pin is a CS. The CS is, um, and CS is just a pin on the digital potentiometer that is just according to the data sheet. Uh, pin number 8 is on the Arduino is going to be connected to CS. And of course you want that CS to be set to output and then start the SPI. There's really nothing more than MCP right in this entire thing. Um, and, MC and MCP right takes a value as an int. And then it says CS low. I think it's a good time to explain what CS does. Or maybe I should have explained it earlier. So CS, when the digital potentiometer detects that CS is off, then it's going to start taking the data from pin number two and three, uh, SPI data. And when CS is on, then digital potential will not take data from pin number two and three. It will ignore what, what is whatever is incoming. So when CS is low, it's going to send out the data uh, B0001000001 that is to tear the chip to set the pod and then simply send out the value you see I have you see I have casted value into byte that is because you are sending byte instead of just the integer and then set the CS back to high that is really it for the MCP right so I have multiple values here but how did I decide that these values will make a particular sound or tone well, well, I've got an Excel sheet for that, so you can take a look at it. The frequency of any 555 simple square wave generator can be calculated using the resistance and the capacitance. And that is, I believe, is equal, frequency is equal to 0 0.72 over resistance times capacitance. Let me actually leave a note here. Frequency equals... 0 0.72 divide by divide by resistance times capacitance all right so i have 0 0.72 and capacitance and i have a target frequency here where did i get where did i get my target frequency that comes down to a piano so this image this place uh, which note has which what frequency and all that stuff and you probably have already noticed that um, 73416 is, of course, 73416, and that is the D2. Um, just decided to copy and paste all the frequencies here. You did notice the lowest you can go is 73461 because um, the resistance cannot go anywhere higher than 10K. Um, if I wanted to play anything higher than 10K, then I probably need more than 10K. And my, uh, just with one single potentiometer, that is not quite possible. Now use this equation, but do modify this equation in a way so you will get resistance equals 0 0.72 over Fc. And then you get the resistance in this, in, in this line. 
And then you want to calculate what uh, what that resistance is in what step. That is to be calculated um, using some information over here. So there are 256 steps. Lowest ohm I can measure from that potentiometer was 71 ohm. Highest was 10k and 570 ohms. And one step is equal to 40, about 41 ohms in change. Because uh, if you simply subtract these, if you simply subtract these two and divide by the 256, that's what you get. Now what I'm going to do is subtract this resistance with this resistance, and then divide that by um, how many steps, what, what, what single step resistance, and I'm gonna round that up to the nearest nearest natural number, and then subtract from 256. Then that's going to give you um, the difference between the top resistance and uh, current resistance, or des uh, re desired resistance, and then subtract that from 256, which is happening right here. And this is just a note that this, uh, what note this is. No pun intended. Now you might have noticed that this whole thing is kind of pointless because you can get a buzzer and Adreno has a really nice method, uh, I mean function, for buzzer, um, if you so if you just say um, buzzer one thousand five hundred, it will buzz at one thousand five hundred hertz, which is much convenient than this, and I probably it can also handle a lot higher um, frequencies as well. Also, buzzer uses much less pins than this does. This um, actually use a lot more pins than you think because when you initialize SPI, you can't use pins between 13, 12, 11, and maybe 10 too. Maybe not 10. Uh, maybe So you can't use pins between 13 and 11 because um, these are directly used, connected to the SPI command, uh, command transfer. And then you have to use another pin for CS control. So that is already 4 pins taken away from your Arduino. I guess the only reason why we build this is um, maybe you probably want to use earbud instead of uh, buzzer. But then you can't really control the volume and I feel like this is loud enough if you put it in your ear, it's probably going to hit, hurt your ear. So what was the point of this entire project? I guess the concept is kind of cool, that's why. 